We gotta sneeze. <coughs> we have another awesome request from one of our subscribers today, all about weathered moss by Bear Paint. Let's get the rundown on this paint color, and then at the end, I'm gonna run down my Bear Paint color palette that I made for it. Run through, I think I meant to say. <laughs> my ultimate goal with this channel is to share my love for painting and decorating with all of you, both on the important technical side of things, but also the more fun and sometimes silly color selection process. Sometimes it's important to learn the process of picking colors yourself, but other times it's just fun to see other people give their examples of what they like. And that's what today's about. Let's talk about weathered moss first, being the main color in question today. And just to put it plainly, this is a paint color that is part of the gray color family. So you already know the color palette that I'm gonna build off of it. We'll try and deviate from gray as much as possible. I don't always like to go full grayscale, monochromatic, or just gray on gray on gray, unless that's what the person wants that I'm maybe picking colors for. But this is what I want, right? So I'll tell you my preference. So firstly, what kind of gray is weathered moss? Normally paint colors are never perfectly neutral or pure. They can favor the warm side of things, they can be a bit cooler leaning, and they can also definitely have different undertones. And I feel that weathered moss has a bit of a green undertone present, which is not overly surprising based on its name. Like actual moss, which might have started green, over time it's been weathered a bit, and its coloration has sort of died down to a point where it almost looks gray. That's my perception of this paint color. It's also a decently dark color, believe it or not, essentially being right in the middle depth wise. So as true to a mid-tone as you can really get with an LRV of 49 for my technical viewers. I love what Bear Paint does on their website where they give you similar colors of varying levels of vibrancy and intensity. And when we take a look at all these colors, we definitely see a lot of green happening. So all this kind of checks out. This green undertone will show up more in some cases compared to others. So if you like the idea of green, then you're good. But if that spooks you and you're maybe hoping for just a plain gray, I'm sorry to tell you, but there really is no plain old gray at this point. There's just too many variables, too many interactions with stuff in your house that can change up the look. Even our eyes perceive color differently person to person. So the best way to know if any color is right for you and it's going to work in your space is to simply test it out which is not what most people wanna hear, but it's the truth. I hate to break it to you. So what are some of the ways that I would use this color? Definitely in more secondary spaces of a home if we're talking walls. Midtone grays in general can sometimes be tricky to work with because the thinking is, well, it's gray, so I'll just be able to throw it anywhere and it'll look fine. It'll just blend in. I would just caution you though, because you gotta be careful that you're not incorporating it with other grays that have different undertones, which could clash, like especially like a red undertone kind of rougey gray, then those are complementary, which may not look that good. And while I do like mid-tones in rooms like bedrooms for a little more of a kind of cozy, happy claustrophobic feel, <laughs> if that makes sense, I'm also not super crazy about the idea of falling asleep with weathered moss walls for some reason. <laughs> I kind of like it as a kitchen cabinet color for some reason, because chances are you're going to be picking a cabinet paint that's perhaps a bit shinier, like a satin finish, let's say. So that could help brighten the look overall and make it more positive, more good vibey. And also the color is a bit more localized, so you can have it as sort of a semi-dramatic utilitarian type of color on the cabinets, and then maybe contrast it with something a little more light and airy on the walls. You can theoretically use it in areas like, you know, the laundry room or mud rooms, maybe an office because it fits that new age, almost brutalist feel, if you're going for that. But even in those spaces, I kind of like my colors to be either intentionally bright and airy or the complete opposite, have something extremely grounded and rich and focused. So this is kind of in the awkward middle. If you can't tell already, this is maybe not one of my favorite colors overall. So what I want to do here is add some other bare paint colors to it to put together a color palette that really works and makes me smile a bit more. So if you're not a subscriber yet, what are you doing, first of all? My regular viewers are familiar, but I'm about to give you three other paint colors that can work in tandem with Weathered Moss, and then also two trim color options that you can use on your baseboards and your doors and your frames to finish everything off. And to all my gray haters watching, my graders, as I like to call them, I think you'll appreciate this palette at the very least. So let's start with Silver Ash. There's a little bit of gray here but what's really happening is we've already lightened things up a bit and we've added in some noticeable warmth, carrying over a touch of green, but also a little bit of yellow as well to add some vibrancy. This is a paint color that feels much more comfortable 
being used in the majority of your home. It could also be the main color of the palette if you need something to carry through more open spaces of your house, like your hallways, and it just feels a little more positive to me overall. You can then add a color like Urban Nature as the second pairing, which is one of my favorite greens by Bare Paint. This is essentially taking weathered moss and taking out like 90% of the gray in it. <laughs> they have very similar levels of darkness. They're both true midtones, but this is just a much more pleasant color that feels already like way more likable to me. I also do enjoy the interaction between Urban Nature and Weathered Moss because they have so many parallels to them. They can work in the same space. In fact, I think that would be nice because it could break up the overdose of gray that a lot of people are trying to move away from. So if you wanted to do an accent wall, I would even do Urban Nature as the three wall colors and then have Weathered Moss as the accent. Imagine gray as an accent, weird. And then we're gonna have a bit of fun with our third color pairing called Auburn Glaze. This is the accent color to cut through any of those subtle colors we were talking about earlier. One thing to note is you're very much working with a red undertoned orange clay color here, kind of meant to represent terracotta. And anything red based is going to really pop off of anything green. And those other three colors all contain varying levels of green. So there's a very complementary relationship happening there. That being said, just be a little selective with where you put opera and glaze, whether it's on an accent wall or on accent furniture and accessories, or even things like pillows and throw blankets. You definitely don't want a ton of both. Otherwise your space would just feel really like, whoa. <laughs> Which is probably the opposite of what you want your home to feel. You want it to feel like, ah, you know? Next up is your trim color options. So if you want to paint your baseboards, your doors and your frames, which I heavily recommend if you're painting your walls, these are two colors you can use. I have a light option called Gallery White, which is a great soft yet stark white that is crisp and simple. And then Letter Gray, which is my dark trim choice. And this is more of a subtle trim option for Weathered Moss specifically, because they do have similarities in terms of their darkness and hue, but there's enough of a difference where they will just be different enough. What's also nice about Letter Gray is it doesn't feel as green, which means it won't clash with Auburn Glaze because of those competing undertones. Letter gray is definitely more gray, but if you're only using it on your trim and your baseboards, it shouldn't be too much of a bummer, right? Here's the palette all together. Let me know what you think. And just before you go, there's an entirely different color palette in this video with a totally different vibe if you want to check it out.